Welcome back to another episode of the Azure Enablement Show. Today, we're going to have a look how you can update your Azure landing zones in the Azure environment. Welcome back. My name is Thomas, and I'm here with Paul and Jan from the Azure Landing Zone team to talk about how you can update your Azure landing zones in your environment. And so it's great to have you both on the call today. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Azure Landing Zones, Azure Landing Zones are really a great way to build your Azure environment using best practices, best practices and build that platform where you then can deploy your apps and, and services. So Paul, again, great to have you today. Uh, why are we here today? Thanks for having me here, Thomas. Yeah, so uh, it's a great, great question you're asking and we get, ask the question a lot as to once you've deployed Azure Landing Zones, how do you keep it up to date? Uh, so I wanted to highlight some of the challenge prior to addressing this topic. So maintaining Azure Landing Zones has a various has various levels of complexity depending on how it's deployed, whether that's through Bicep, through the portal, and through Terraform. Customers can manually subscribe to Azure Landing Zone repo uh, to follow our changes. However, uh, we are very actively developing Azure Landing Zones, and therefore, there's a lot of notifications that you're going to get from uh, from subscribing to that Azure Landing Zone repo. So you, you'll, you'll, you'll find it hard to actually find the information you're looking for there. So we do have a, a what's new section. Uh, there's a link that I'll share with you at the end of the, uh, of the session uh, where we update monthly to provide uh, guidance and updates that we've done throughout that month's efforts that we've put in. Now, the onus is still on the customer to manually review these changes by going in every month and, and combing that, uh, that information to kind of see what's relevant for them, see what we're doing. And, and that's, that, that's manual, right? That's on the customer uh, to do that. So finally, the other thing we've heard is uh, the cost of change is greater than the cost of staying the same. So uh, we need to help inform our customers of the value of keeping up to date with Azure Landing Zone changes that we have and why they should do so. Yeah, no, fantastic. And I agree. I mean, with this cloud speed and all the changes happening in the cloud with new services, new features, that's all great. But obviously, you need to keep up with your environment and take advantage of, of sure. that. So uh, when you talk about updating Azure Landing Zone, what does that entail? Yeah, so again, kind of when you deploy Azure Landing Zone refer reference implementation, so Portal, Bicep, Terraform, it takes a snapshot of the Azure Landing Zone guidance and code that we, we have at that particular point in time. So based on this, customers' environments can drift uh, from the latest enhancements that we that we make to the, and changes that we make to the reference implementations. Azure policy is at the center of Azure Landing Zone, uh, providing policy-driven governance and guardrails. Uh, that, uh, that we, and we have an Azure Landing Zone library, a custom library of policies that we deploy uh, that are assigned to the reference implementations. We heard from our customers that policies were complex to update uh, and that they were lacking clear guidance and struggling to handle the, the permutations that arise. For example, uh, deprecating Azure Landing Zone custom policies. How do they do that? Updates that we make to custom policies where we continue to maintain and evolve those as part of Azure Landing Zone updates. Uh, so we needed a clear process on how customers investments in Azure Landing Zones are kept up to date with the evolution that we make. Perfect, perfect. This is fantastic. So Jan, can you tell us a little bit about what guidance is provided? That's a great question, Thomas. Uh, let me show you what we created. We've created an overview page within the CAF document or the Cloud Adoption Framework documentation, which is the initial landing page for guidance on why you should keep your landing zone or Azure Landing Zones updated. Um, and as, as I scroll down, you can see that there are a number of reasons. We've specified a number of reasons why you would want to actually do so. And let me just talk you through them. Um, so we want to maintain improved security. As new threats emerge, Azure Landing Zones evolve to meet this. And customer implementation should follow suit to maintain recommended security posture. Also, um, avoid platform configuration drift. In addition to the above, as things change, technical depth accumulates. And so to keep this to a minimum, the implementation should be regularly reviewed and updated where required. Then again, uh, optimize for Azure improvements. 
um, as Azure the platform evolves, new services will become available, which should be included in um, Azure Learning Zone resource implementations, and older services may be deprecated and should be reconsidered. And so to the last point, we have get support where we're talking about, since this is an open source um, community a project, we want to keep the, the solution or the implementation as aligned as, as possible to Azure Landing Zone current version. Um, also, a link down below, uh, we have a link to a couple of articles on how you would go about migrating off um, Landing Zone custom policies to Azure built-in policies as well as how you go about updating Azure Landing Zone custom policies to newer versions. Uh, and in that guidance, we particularly detail how to handle uh, drift detection by comparing customers uh, Azure Tenant to Azure Landing Zone baselines, where ASET GovVis provides a simple way to compare and list details on each policy within the custom environment. Uh, then to accompany this drift detection, we've also created a document that details deprecated services which is located in our Azure Landing Zone GitHub repo. Depending on the outcome of the drift detection, we have provided guidance on how to migrate to built-in policies or update to the latest version of an Azure Landing Zone custom policy. And in addition to the above, we have documentation coming up which describes why you would want to use infrastructure's code up, uh, to keep Azure Landing Zone up to date, which will be released shortly. That's great. Uh, is there anything else? Yes, we have also created step-by-step -step guidance within the Azure Landing Zone repo that goes through the low-level process for both custom updates and transitioning to build it. The links for these are on the respective CAF or Cloud Adoption Framework documents, which you can see below. Awesome. Uh, this is great. So, Paul, uh, I will definitely have a look at this and, and see how I can obviously put that into my environment. So where should people go if they want to have a deeper look at this and see um, how it is has been done. Thanks, Thomas. Yeah, so uh, I've got a few links to share, which will appear on screen. So the first one I want to talk to is uh, familiarizing yourself with the documentation that Jan's just shared on the screen. Um, the subsequent links, as you saw within there, that will take you off to the deeper, deeper um, instruction set. Uh, there's a second link I want to talk to you, which I, I mentioned earlier in the show and emphasize the value in this. Uh, it, uh, the What's New page, it provides monthly updates. This is uh, still a valuable source of detailed information. Some of what uh, we've talked about today, uh, the drift detection, for example, that will be taken out so you don't have to go through uh, you know, all of that what's new. But there are other things that will appear in there. So it's definitely worth keeping an eye on that. Um, the third one I want to share with you is a page we've created for deprecated services. So what we're starting to do is we're deprecating policies that we've custom built to move and transition to, to a built-in policy that exists uh, that didn't when we previously uh, built that policy. Uh, the fourth link I want to share with you um, is a quarterly community call that we uh, that anybody can join, free to join. Uh, I'll share that link on the screen as well. Uh, we also have a channel uh, on YouTube which shares our previous recordings as well. So if you want to hear about our previous updates that we've done, uh, we do some deep dives and talk about things that we've been focusing on for that quarter. Feel free to check that out as well. And finally, um, Jan talked about uh, Azure Governance Visualizer, or shortened to AZ GovViz. Uh, that uh, I I'm going to share a demo with you of that tool. This tool is fantastic, and it really complements the Cloud Adoption Framework uh, guidance that we've put together. And it, it helps with that drift, drift detection in an automated way that can match your Azure tenant to the, the latest releases of policies that we've come up with. So there's plenty of documentation. Uh, I would encourage customers to go and familiarize themselves with their processes and how this would align with future updates that they need to make. And if they need to make any uh, tweaks to those processes to incorporate this guidance, highly recommend they start looking at that so they, they have time to plan for that as, uh, as we, we release updates. Awesome. This is some really fantastic content out there. And I definitely want to make sure that I join one of these uh, community calls as well. Um, with that, I want to say thank you, Jan. Thank you, Paul, uh, for being our guests uh, today. And also thank you to everyone watching. If you want to learn more about the Cloud Adoption Framework, make sure you check out aka.ms adopt.